What's the sequence of medical treatment? Oh, yeah. Well, he's not allowed in the building, is he? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we have a standing no, I don't want to. I don't want to keep them waiting. No. So we had standing order on that. Bobby Clark. No. Yeah. Bobby's I know. Just kidding. No, I was congratulating myself as I left. I thought, gee, I've got a ten minute or more cushion, and everything was just great, you know. And then all of a sudden, I left call. anybody anyway. First, I'd have to look up the number and then call. Bobby, I think Channel Five should give you a phone when you're I have one. Oh. I have one. Oh, but just to look up the number? Or well, something? yeah, I have a directory, and but I would have had to look up the number. You're wrong. 1411 works. Well, yes, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, Bill, welcome to Dallas. Well, thank you very much. Mr. Rocketeer. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any uh, concern on your part that uh, you'll just get labeled Mr. Rocketeer and that it'll hinder your career down the line? Uh, I suppose that's a that's a possibility, but uh, I'm I'm really not concerned about it <laughs> at this point. Um, geez, I told somebody yesterday. I think uh, it's uh, me worrying about being stereotyped. It's, it's a bit like a, uh, a starving man going to a banquet and wor being worried about getting fat. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it just didn't seem like it's a a concern right now. This was the part then that you really wanted. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I, I liked the script from the from the very beginning, and it and it got better and better as we went along. As I understand it, they really were looking <coughs> for someone that didn't already have some kind of an image. Is that true? I think that's the case. Uh, um, I've heard Joe say that, uh, Joe Johnston, the director, um, and they got someone without any baggage. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had more baggage. <laughs> <laughs> As an actor, Bill, what is your background? You've done TV, haven't you? Yes. Um, I've done uh, TV exclusively till now. Um, um, a couple of series uh, and various episodes of, of different, different series. What would people maybe associate you with? Uh, dynasty, perhaps, crime story, um, a dynasty or crime story. And Boy, Dynasty you played? I played Stephen Carrington's boyfriend. And for how many seasons did you do that? I played for half a season, half a season. Was that a good experience? It was a fine experience. It was a wonderful experience. I was, uh, I was, uh, um, yeah, it was terrific. There were, you know, I was just starting out. Uh, and I was still, uh, you know, uh, nervous a good deal of the time in front of the camera. Not that I'm not that I'm not now, <laughs> uh, but I was, you know, I was I was sort of getting my feet and tr and trying to get comfortable with this this huge black, you know, contraption that sort of hangs over your shoulder when you're trying to be as natural as you can, and uh, and it was it was it allowed me to do that. You know, I was working with a. a a bunch of people that have worked for years and years in the, in the business. Um, so it was, uh, I suppose, a, a, a real learning experience. So. Working in this movie, The Rocketeer, which has uh, a really a, a basis in special effects, and most actors find that a little disconcerting. Now, you're a fairly new actor, so how did you adjust to that environment? I, <clears throat> excuse me, there wasn't a great deal of adjusting really as far as that goes. Um, I, I, I'd met with Joe before we started the film and, and I understood that, that, uh, that his, uh, that he was not going to uh, overemphasize, how do I put this, overemphasize one aspect and, and, and not pay enough attention to another. He uh, he seemed uh, very concerned from from the from the get go that uh, that uh, an adequate attention be paid to the the characters and to the story and and to making the whole thing sort of plausible and believable and and uh, and enjoyable. So I, I had no concern with uh, the special effects overwhelming, you know, the the other aspects of the the film. People who see the movie, the first thing they're going to, when they see Rocketeer rocketing about, they're going, how do they do that? Uh -huh.
So how did they do that? <laughs> they do that in a number of ways. They they uh, they <clears throat> they strung people up from wires. They 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 strapped them to helicopters. They uh, they they made little models of people and flung them across the room. They did all sorts of things. They, uh, you know, there's probably six or eight different kinds of uh, effects used in any one flying sequence. Um, and it's all, it all is pretty darn seamless, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. And then uh, some of it is even animation, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. That's right. For you personally, Bill, what did they put you through <coughs> for those sequences? Oh. Well, I, I have a, as you may recall, there's a, there's a uh, airplane flying sequence in the beginning. <clears throat> um, and I have had for several years a, a, a fairly pervasive fear of flying, um, which I have since, you know, found out that it really has more to do with commercial flight than any, anything else. But um, Joe asked me when I, when I first met him if I wouldn't be willing to get in a, a biplane and, and do the aerial sequences for the beginning of the film. And I said, well, sure, you know, I have no problem with that, which, you know, of course, I'm, I wasn't going to turn down the movie because I'm, a, I'm afraid to fly. Uh, so they painted up a, an old biplane to resemble the, the GB racing plane that I crashed in the beginning of the film. Um, it's a three cockpit biplane. They put me in the last cockpit and they, you know, they built a little hood over it or a little cockpit thing to resemble the racing plane. They put the camera in the middle cockpit facing back, uh, backward, um, and then they put the pilot in the front of the plane. And between me and the pilot, we had to operate the camera and fly the plane and, and <laughs> do all this other crazy stuff. He took me up over Santa Maria uh, and just ran me ragged. I mean, he just, he did some things that were just beyond my belief. And um, uh, the odd thing for me, though, was that I never, I, that I can recall, I never had a, had a moment of, uh, of fear connected with that. Uh, it was, I think it, it's a control thing with me. I, I, in the big, huge planes, I feel sort of completely out of control. And in that situation, I was, of course, uh, hooked up by radio with the pilot, and I had controls in my cockpit, even though I didn't know how to use them, you know. But uh, so... I did that. Um, uh, what else? What did else? you have to uh, <clears throat> uh, fly on a wire? You know, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I think stuntmen did. Uh, stuntmen did do most of that. Um, I was up on a wire once or twice. Um, they didn't want to. You know, some of that's pretty risky. Those those wires can can uh, snap for for no reason. You know, and I don't think they wanted to risk risk that with me. Uh, though they did send me up in a plane, <laughs> I still can't believe that. But when you, uh, when you went up in the plane, was he doing aerobatics and that sort of thing? No, you know, he was, he was doing, because we were supposed to be crashing, he was doing a lot of sort of wing waggling and flying really close to the ground and, uh, and uh, he did some pretty tight turns and dives and stuff like that, uh, which was scary enough. I, uh, in preparation for the flying bit that I was to do in the film, I went down to a local airport and I took an aerobatic biplane ride out over Santa Monica Bay, um, which was uh, maybe why I wasn't nervous during the shooting of the film because uh, at one point during that aerobatic ride that I took before the film, I found myself uh, staring straight up out of an open cockpit at the ocean, which was about 5,000 feet above me, which is, I just hang in there, you know, by straps. It was. It was quite something. And yet, you still don't like commercial flying. Yet, I still don't. I still get, I still get nervous. Last night, flying in here, I just, I just get all bent out of shape. <laughs> <laughs> You're the white knuckle flyer, huh? I am. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Bill, the film is great fun, and uh, it looks to be uh, one of the major successes of the summer. And uh, I'm very happy for you people. Thank. I don't know what's happening. Really. <laughs> Special effects. <laughs> and uh, do you have another film that you'll be working on? or? No, I have nothing lined up right now. Um, I'm just sort of waiting and watching, you know. Well, I'll bet there will be That's some right. things. We'll see. Okay. Right. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. That was very nice.
don't know what it is. But I think, I think it is the, um, I think it is the, the control thing. Uh, I've heard a lot of psychologists who are trying to help people overcome the fear of blind. And that's what they say, that, that that's part of it. The person feels no control and uh, trapped in a sense. And uh, even though, as you said, you didn't know how to fly the plane, you felt a little more Oh, you felt closer to the control. I did. You I could did. yell at the pilot and say, yeah. hey, idiot, you yeah. don't do yeah, this exactly. for that. <laughs> you know, I have since been, uh, I have since since the movie, I've been para, para, paraplaning, hey, which, really? which is a So, are you doing, you're just checking? Yeah, I've got a lot of movie chairs to cover up some cords sticking out of the wall. I got that. I've got a little of this in, but I can't. There's no way. Yeah. Okay. Let's, we're, we're rolling. Do we have labels that are bothering no. you? Okay. No, you're rolling. Okay. Give me a voice level. Uh, I'll be talking at about this level. I'll be talking. Am I not plugged in? Yeah, you're plugged in. I'm Give me a voice level. Uh, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, D, U, B, W, X, Y, Z. You're fine. Okay. You're rolling. Okay. Bill, I think everybody who sees the Rocketeer is going to be so impressed with the flying scenes and they're going to say, how did they do that? So, how did they do that? <laughs> well, <laughs> do you want me to go into a no, spiel? That's fine. That's fine. Okay, now just get some two-shot reactions. Just two. two, two. Wasn't that question on a two-shot? No. Oh, we'll do it on two shot. Did you re-ask the question? Bill, I think everyone who sees the Rocketeer will be impressed with the flying, and they'll wonder how they do that. So, how did they do that? <laughs> well, it's funny you should ask. Um, you know, they, they strung us up from wires, and they, they, they strapped people to helicopters, and threw one guy off a roof. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, they they did every they pulled every trick in the book. They really did. They they you know in a lot of ways this film is sort of a step back as far as special effects go. They uh, they uh, they used uh, every kind of practical effect. The practical effect is one that takes place on the set. Uh, they they used every kind of practical effect that, that's ever been used, and they used a, a few that have never been used, and then, then they used optical illusions. Uh, um, Doug Henning was there, he performed some magic, and uh, yeah. So that, that worked out really well. Great. Okay, okay, for that'll, that'll do it. So let's wait.